Hey friends, welcome to this Stalls Live webinar, Understanding Print Cut. This is number three in our equipment series, and I know they've been all uh, well attended, and so I'm excited to come to you uh, live here from my little small corner of the world in southwestern Pennsylvania and talk to you about this uh, technology that is really relevant uh, for businesses um, for the past 10 years probably, but even more so as we move into 2021. So I have a ton of content planned that I want to share with you today, but something I want you to know is that this is uh, live. And so we highly encourage you to chat in your questions as we go through in case you have specific things you came here to learn today or things you're not uh, understanding or want further advice on. Uh, Stacy will be uh, helping me uh, today and she'll be managing the question queue. We'll stop several times throughout the presentation to uh, be able to take those questions. So um, I know that we have people from all over the country and really the world attending. We have uh, Roberta from Hawaii, thanks for joining. We have Bonnie from California. We have uh, Yosta joining us today. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, make sure you guys shout out who you are and where you're watching from. Always love to see our Stalls followers from around the world uh, join in for content. So I'm in my uh, spare bedroom, which is quickly becoming an office uh, today, um, but I've hand selected uh, a few videos to be able to uh, talk to you about print cut and teach some of these concepts that I really think are critical as you are thinking about potentially investing in this equipment, or also if you've already invested in the equipment, making the most out of your print cut system. Uh, it's probably by selecting the videos, it's more than I could ever show you live running the machine. And so I've pieced together some different clips where you'll get to see some hands-on uh, work that we're gonna go through today. So um, as, we, as we work our way into things, I think one of the first questions um, that I had noted uh, that you may have is what is print cut? I trust that many of you already know what print cut is. That's why you've registered for this uh, webinar because you want to learn more about it, but I hate to assume anything. And so what we've done is I've selected a video that uh, Jimmy has completed from stalls. It's a very high level view of print cut and the workflow. I'm going to play that for you here just in a second, but before I get into it, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is ink, because print cut is a digital process, and that's what makes print cut so powerful is that you're able to uh, digitally print all onto a single layer of film, whether that's heat transfer film for an apparel application, like we'll talk about a lot today, or whether that's a film that's being used for a floor graphic, a wall graphic, a banner, whatever it may be. Uh, we actually have a digital print head that's in a machine that lays down ink. And that completely uh, changes the game and opens up the types of logos that you can produce that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but without further ado, I'm, we're going we're gonna to show you the ink type that I like the most uh, for print cut, which is either a solvent or eco solvent ink. Uh, latex certainly is good as well. But the Roland machines that we sell here at Stalls use the eco solvent ink, which means you can put them into a, a room like a bedroom here um, without having the ventilation, which really makes it uh, the technology uh, something that can be adopted by even home businesses or people working out of an office space or their garage. So let me work to navigate over to the video of Jimmy walking through the steps involved in producing a print cut graphic. And then we're going to talk specifically about where these designs that he's getting ready to produce fit into the overall apparel decorating uh, workflow. So let's start that video for you. The Roland TrueViz SG2 series is a new generation of print cut machine that offers superior color output and advanced cutting features. Roland print cut systems can be used with various heat transfer vinyls to create full color digital prints. Let me show you this process from start to finish. The first step of the process is to print and cut your design. The Roland TrueViz SG2 has four print heads that print bi-directionally for optimal print speeds. Once the printing portion is finished, the print head carriage will navigate back to the capping station. The cutting carriage then detaches from the print head carriage and contour cuts your designs.
Now that our design has been printed and cut, we can start the weeding process. Pick a corner of the media to start weeding away your excess material. Take your mask and apply it to your graphic with a squeegee. Next, we peel away our mask in a diagonal fashion. Reapply your mask backing and trim apart your designs. Using the Hotronics Fusion IQ, we have the ability to thread our garment onto the lower platen. Pre-press to get rid of any wrinkles and moisture. Line up our design approximately two inches from the collar and heat apply for the recommended settings. The product I'm using is Stahl's Express Print. Express Print applies at 300 degrees for 15 to 20 seconds with a medium pressure and is a hot peel. So it was that easy to create this shirt. To review, we print and cut our full color custom logo on our Roland TrueViz SG2 series of print cut machine. We then weeded our material, masked it, and took it to the heat press to heat apply it to our garment. All right, so hopefully you guys um, can understand the workflow. That's one of the, the first and the most important things that uh, we want you to understand with print cut. And what you should have been able to uh, gather there, of course, is the digital ink, as we talked about laying down on the media, but there are still steps involved in the process. And so I want you to be crystal clear as you are approaching a technology investment. If you already have a vinyl cutter and doing heat transfer vinyl, yes, there is still weeding involved in the print cut process, certainly for uh, apparel applications. However, um, in this case, we're printing all of those layers that you would normally layer vinyl in at the same time. So you're able to greatly reduce uh, your weeding from accomplishing it this way. And so that's super high level view of the process. You print it, cut it weed it, mask it, and then heat apply it. And as long as you select the right material for the job, which we'll talk about in a bit, it really opens up the uh, available product categories that you can decorate with the process. Now, we will get a little bit into uh, specific print cut units that are offered by stalls and talk about some uh, differences in between the units. Um, but one thing I would like to say up front is there are print cut machines all the way from 20 inches up to 64 inches. And so you can really run the gamut on size and price. I tend to think for a company that is doing 99% apparel decoration, that the 30 inch units are a good balance of speed and quality uh, and price to be able to do those applications. However, what I'll tell you is if you talk to most customers that have already invested in print cut at some point in their apparel decorating journey, they'll always recommend that, almost always recommend, I should say, leave myself a little wiggle room, that you would go with a 54 or a 64 inch unit. Basically, just like when you're buying your heat press, go as wide or as big as you can afford, uh, then you won't wish you had the other one. But I understand there's space considerations, you want to get started somewhere. So I would look in at those 30 inch units like the SG2 uh, 300 that was featured in the video. And there's lots of different model numbers for printer cutters. And I'll go through some of those uh, nuances here um, as we get to the end. But I want to make sure I get into uh, my slideshow. If you've watched any of my presentations uh, before, you uh, know that I love uh, this particular grid. And I'm just going to start my presentation here. And it's the what to use when grid. And I rely on this a lot when I'm training any apparel decorator, whether they're new or experienced, because this will really help you get to uh, the right bucket of heat transfer, high level heat transfer category for decorating uh, your job. And it's very simple. If you look at the grid, uh, you have the X and Y axis. If you look across, you can 
choose how many colors are in your logo and then how many garments do you need to make with that logo. And that big orange section of the grid, if you see that, that's digital transfers. That is what we're talking about today. That's print cut. And so from an apparel standpoint, print cut is really optimal, definitely when you have three or more colors in your design, and that includes full color and gradients and photos and all of that thing. We'll talk a little bit more about art here in a second. And it's relevant all the way up to around that 50 piece order till you need to start thinking about full color screen printed transfers. Uh, certainly, if you were doing a single piece on um, the three colors or four colors, um, this is going to be a, a perfect technology, even if you're doing smaller runs like 12, 24, even 48. Uh, print cut is going to be the most cost effective way uh, to get the job done. So I love uh, this grid. If you're watching this, you may want to screen capture this grid, certainly. Uh, you can go to our website and find this and find it in a lot of our tutorial videos. Uh, but it's really important to know when is print cut the right technology to rely on. Um, something I want to mention as well while I'm on this slide, you see that light blue section of the grid that's heat transfer vinyl. Know that your printer cutter, it prints and it cuts, which means it can cut only as well. So if you've been operating with, say, a craft cutter or a desktop cutter or let's say an inexpensive cutter that you're looking to upgrade, the reality is your printer cutter can operate as a really nice 30 inch, 54 inch vinyl cutter as well. And you can accommodate single color vinyl into the machine for those low quantity, low color jobs to maximize your investment. Now, this may seem like a little out of place, but I know we get the question a lot, so I want to make sure I cover it. Um, Yes, you can cut glitter material in the printer cutter. Um, yes, you can uh, cut flock material and even our new soft foam material. Those will work fine in the printer cutter. But if you're going to do a lot of those specialty products, especially the flock where there tends to be loose fibers, you really want a separate vinyl cutter for those as a long-term solution. If you do a lot of that work on your printer cutter, what happens is those little fibers from the flock will want to gravitate towards the print heads and then it's going to cause issues when you go to create uh, a print job that may be on a really high-end canvas material or banner material where you may get drop out in your print so um, just as a best practice if you plan to do a lot of flock work and glitter work especially uh, make sure you have a dedicated vinyl cutter although the print cut machine can can work for both uses now when we think about um, this type of work i have this shirt here and i, I love this shirt because it you know it kind of shows the same logo um, but it walks you through all of the different uh, print cut media finishes uh, that we have here at Stalls. Um, this is Express Print. Um, you can see all of this is on a single layer. I'd like to say Express Print is our all purpose material. So if you're looking to just stock one product that's going to be the best mix of easy to print, easy to cut, easy to weed, kind of easy workflow, Express Print is it. So if you're familiar with our heat transfer vinyl lineup, this would be say the comparable to Ultra Weed where it's easy to use, it's at a fair price point, it's a good everyday go-to print cut material. Now, if you want to up your game and get something a little more premium, a little softer, there's other choices for that. So we have the soft opaque, which is super thin on the garment and super soft. So when you're thinking about print cut, one of the limitations is if you do like a big block design on the front of the t-shirt, Guys, it's like a piece of vinyl on the front of the t-shirt. Even if it's super thin, it's not going to feel great. But when you go to products like soft opaque that are super thin, you tend to get a little bit more uh, lighter weight feel. But a lot of that finished feel on the garment comes into how you design. If you design you know, something like this that has the open void areas in the design where the shirt's going to show through, that's going to make an overall uh, lighter feel on the garment. Now... Something else that Print Cut does really well for apparel is uh, sublimation blocking. So we have a product called Sublistop that actually has a charcoal backing on it, which means you can do higher end fabrics like sportswear, like I'm wearing, um, without worrying about any bleeding through your print. And so while a lot of people, you know, they're looking to spend, you know, 10 to 20 grand on an investment, um, when we were going to trade shows, they would walk into the trade show booth and they would say, I'm between a printer cutter and DTG. Which one should I invest in? And it's very difficult to answer that question. Maybe if you've had them both, you can answer that question for your business. But it really comes down to what is your sales strategy? Who are you going to sell to that will help guide you to the right investment? 
one of the big advantages as we look at the materials and I get ready to show you um, another video here in a moment is the product assortment that you can do with print cut. Um, if you look at DTG and it is getting better for polyester fabrics, but generally if you look at DTG, it's a t-shirt technology. Um, there's, there's not a lot of uh, DTGs in that 10 to, to 20,000 price point that will really do the, the range of synthetic fabrics and products um, that will allow you to decorate like a print cut system would. And so that variety, not only the logos that you can produce, but the variety of products that you can make with a printer cutter is one of the most powerful um, advantages. And I have another uh, video that Jimmy did where he goes a little bit through kind of the highlights of this SG2 uh, machine up on the front. But at the tail end of the video, after he goes through about 60 seconds or so, I uh, am standing at a table in our studio and I'm literally holding up product after product that you can accommodate with this machine. And I think that kind of will open up uh, the sales opportunities for your business. So let me play that video for you really quick. We're excited to offer the new Roland TrueViz SG2 series of print cut machines. These new machines offer a vibrant color output paired with new and advanced cutting features. As with all Roland print cut systems, you can use a wide range of media to create custom digital prints. Your choices include heat transfer vinyl for garments, gloss white vinyl for decals, as well as banner, canvas, and wall graphic material. Let's take a closer look at the features of this new machine. The overall dimensions of this machine are approximately 81 inches long, 26 inches wide, and 52 inches high when it's on the stand. The new TR2 inks provide brighter and more vivid prints at a lower cost per square foot than previous models. TR2 inks offer durability of up to three years without lamination. True Rich Color provides new color profiles, allowing for improved output on neutral grays, color gradation, and natural skin tones. The new FlexFire print heads are designed to maximize print performance even at high speeds. The new and improved media clamps allow for ease of media loading and also the ability to sheet cut the media without the need to remove the media clamps. The new pinch roller system will automatically lift the middle pinch rollers to avoid contact with the freshly printed media while cutting the design. The outside rollers offer adjustable pressure options to improve the material tracking. Roland has added LED lights in the print bay to provide a well-lit area to inspect prints as they are being produced. The new TrueViz series of print cut machines come with Roland VersaWorks 6 software. This is the manufacturer's RIP software that you'll use to operate the machine. Now that you understand some of the features of the Roland TrueViz SG2, what can you make with it? Here's Josh Ellsworth to show you what you can create when paired with print cut materials from stalls. Hi, I'm Josh Ellsworth and I'd like to talk to you about some of the applications that you can expect to complete in your business when you have a print cut machine powering all of the heat applied graphics that you can create. First off, just to review the workflow, we're printing, cutting, weeding, and then we're masking to create a graphic that can be positioned onto apparel and heat applied. So whether that's a, um, a full badge style logo or free floating text like you see here with selecting the appropriate print cut media, and there's a lot of choices from stalls, you can do all sorts of graphics onto your items. Once you have your graphic ready to heat apply, let's talk about now what I can make with the machine. So in this case, we're looking at a five to six color graphic, absolutely no problem to apply this product onto cotton, whether that's a badge style graphic like we see here, or even creating custom numbering with a color gradient or a texture within the application. Very popular use for the print cut machine in the sports market. Of course, when you talk sports, we're talking about synthetics, polyesters and nylons. And so application to polyester is no problem. There are print cut materials that apply at a low temperature, so you're not scorching your polyester fabrics. Even materials that work with our heated lower attachment to completely eliminate the scorch mark on the most challenging fabrics. So whether going on to a dark colored fabric or a light color, doesn't even have to be polyester, there are opportunities for you with print cut material. Additionally, let's talk about nylon. 
So think of the opportunities that are out there in uh, jackets, in, in cooler bags, in backpacks, these sorts of opportunities that are available to you, whether you're selling to, in sports or business or any other market, um, all possible with print cut. We have media types that will apply to jackets like you're seeing here. Of course, when you start to press these items, you need to make sure you have the right heat press to be able to get your item flat. But if you can get that item flat and understand the proper technique with loading, um, you can do uh, cooler bags in these sorts of opportunities without an issue. Additionally, we have a faux leather here that's been customized with print cut. So think of the opportunities with pad folios and handbags, uh, tons of things that you can complete with the right techniques. Now, not only are you able to decorate a variety of items, but you're able to create your own patterns. So patterns are something that we see trending. And keep in mind, we are printing onto the heat transfer vinyl, what we call our CAD color materials. So if you want to print your own patterns to be able to create monograms for shoes, that is an opportunity for you. Also, this sample where I've combined a leopard print with our standard CAD cut glitter flake material. You can mix and match materials when you're working with print cut. Combine these effects with some of your basic heat transfer films like Flock for some really cool looks. Additionally, if you want to start with just a glitter material because you just want to work on one media, there are glitter materials available to run through your print cut uh, that can be heat applied. So rather than layering four or five colors of glitter, we can print and cut all in one step, even free floating text based designs like you're seeing here. So lots of potential, lots of opportunity just in the category of wearables for your print cut device. Now, when you go into a client, we start to expand the conversation. Your print cut machine is capable of printing onto decal material to create stickers. These stickers can be applied to a variety of items. Here I have a sample of it applied onto some drinkware. So tons of opportunity with what the machine can make. Additionally, the machine can print direct to canvas material. It can print direct to banner material. It can print wall graphics. So Open up your mind, open up the sales opportunities when you invest in a print cut device. I talked to many apparel decorators that say a printer cutter was the single best investment for their business. If you'd like more information, visit stalls.com to learn all about print cut for apparel. All right. So wanted to make sure I played that because sometimes it's easier just to rapidly hold up the stuff and show it. Um, I did see some questions coming in, so I'm keeping an eye on the chat as well as Stacy uh, as we're going through. So I want to make sure I stop um, and go over a couple of the questions. One of them uh, was that I answered in the chat during that video was, does it print white? Okay, so there is the ability to purchase a eco solvent printer from Roland that prints uh, that can be loaded with a white ink cartridge. So that is the um, VG model. You can get it with a white ink configuration, but I would say for apparel, there's really not a great use for white ink. In my experience, uh, when you print on the clear apparel uh, media, the white doesn't maintain its opacity when it's applied to the garment. And so for that purpose, uh, you start with the white uh, base material. So the vinyl that you're printing is actually white and any areas that aren't weeded that are void of ink that aren't printed will remain a nice bright white on your garment. Having said that, I do know a lot of folks that invest in printer cutters. They have the white ink uh, because there is a, a nice application for that for uh, static clings or clear window decals where you need white uh, as a color because you're working on a transparent surface and you want to be able to uh, see that. Another question is um, a basically what I call a print then cut workflow. Um, I think John, yeah, John has asked a question about uh, printing your image on the print cut, then putting it into a cutter on small orders if you already have a vinyl cutter. Um, and so that's a, a viable method. So a lot of um, companies out there will sell a printer only to pair with a cutter. So basically you print with registration marks on the material and then you load it into a separate device for cutting. Um, if we have time, and I think we will, we'll go through a video uh, in a little bit that shows the lamination workflow, and that'll kind of simulate that for you, where we're going to print with registration points, actually laminate uh, the print um, for where we need more durability out of the application, then load back into the device uh, for cutting. So that's a workflow. That's a choice. I personally prefer to keep it all inside of one machine and not have to handle it in between if I can, but there's a lot of folks that will use that workflow if they need to laminate 
uh, for whatever reason, or they want to keep their printer free because it's not as fast as it needs to be to keep up with everything uh, that they want to do. So if your volume spikes, then it makes sense to use print only, then cut only. And then uh, last question I saw before the last little grouping that came in uh, is, do I prefer print cut or sublimation? And I would just say I like them both. Um, I know that's not a cop out, but each one has its purpose. Uh, sublimation is great, but in the fabric marketplace, it's really only good for uh, light colors that have at least 65% in polyester content for it to work. And so that leaves a huge part of the market that you can't print. I mean, take for instance, the shirt I'm wearing. Uh, you could never uh, sublimate this in a good way. Um, also sublimation happens up around 375 degrees. And so you scorch a lot of the fabrics that you try to sublimate or you yellow them or you get uh, markings. Whereas a lot of the print cut materials apply down at 208 degrees. Uh, certainly sublimation is a little bit more achievable um, for a small decorator that has a limited a budget, uh, the desktop sublimation, and it will allow you to do things like uh, hard goods that are specially coded for sublimation, whether that's an iPhone case or a Christmas ornament or any of those uh, polymer coated goods, uh, even 100% polyester can koozies and things like that. Um, they're both very good um, and they each have their purpose. So I think either one would be a nice expansion depending on what you are looking to accomplish. Um, and then uh, Janet just typed in a question, any suggestions for print cut on the glitter uh, with one wash inside out? I had a lot of uh, fading. Okay, and so uh, a couple things about the glitter. The glitter tends to work uh, better with the, um, depends on the ink set you have. So if you're using one of the True Viz machines that were released um, and sold for about a year, year and a half, um, about six months ago is when we stopped selling uh, those machines um, and started selling the new uh, TrueViz ink set. Um, there was a compatibility issue between those inks and the glitter material. So that could be what you're experiencing, Janet. So we'll make sure to reach out to you offline and let you know some options. But no, the latest printers are very durable um, with, the, with the glitter print material and the ink uh, that's there. All right, um, good. So want to make sure we're we're keeping up here with everything that I wanted to tell you today and so I'm going to jump real quick to another slide I tend to talk a lot and lose track of where I'm at uh, so let's share this with you real quick okay just to review advantages of print cut one is increased logo capability so all colors on a single layer um, equals simplified production and lower cost um, I do want to jump in on to how much it costs to produce a logo here in one moment after I catch up on my presentation. Um, also, photorealism, you saw in the video, we had the uh, canvas print, but you can do high DPI photos. I know a lot of decorators that collaborate with local photographers to even produce uh, products for them. So think, be creative with where you sell the product. And varied logos on one print run. Uh, although we're showing all the same logo in this image, um, you can easily, because we're printing, you can easily gang up, you know, 20 different customer logos in, in single pieces or five, piece, five pieces each because we're printing them all onto a white media. So it makes it a lot simpler for processing a variety of logos at one time. Also, uh, we ju you just watched this video, but the uh, product assortment, I think we kind of hammered home that point already and you understand that. And then the last uh, advantage that I wanted to outline was the made to order workflow. And I think this is really critical is that you can basically make when you have the money. And a lot of folks um, in screen printing and other processes that run e-commerce stores, they'll pre-buy inventory and then you're having to manage a lot of sales, um, a lot of sizes rather. And, and if something doesn't sell, you kind of get stuck with the inventory or having to clearance it. Uh, transfers in general and heat printing in general is great for just-in-time manufacturing, just-in-time fulfillment. But Print Cut leads the pack um, when it comes to this because I literally can stock one or two rolls of material in white uh, for the different styles of media that I want to offer, maybe a basic and a glitter, and I can print the color as well. So if I want red, I can just do a single color red design. If I want blue with orange, I can print those together. And so I'm literally creating as I get the order. It's super lean rather than stocking a lot of rolls of vinyl or a lot of pre-printed shirts or a lot of transfers to commit to order. The only caveat to that, and we'll outline it clearly as a weakness, is you have to make sure that you design your art with print cut in mind. 
And so artwork is a competency that we recommend that you have in your business before you invest in print cut. Uh, don't expect to start from zero, uh, not knowing a single thing about how to create a design and be effective with a printer cutter. So we always throw that out there um, as a caution, uh, learn to do it yourself, hire somebody to do it, but you need to know Corel, Illustrator, some design program where you can create the artwork. Um, and then, you know, with the popularity of web stores and e-commerce uh, fulfillment, um, I want to say that this is the ideal fulfillment method for your always open stores. Um, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, if you're not familiar with client specific web stores, um, you really need that needs to be part of your vocabulary for 2021, uh, because with how we're selling to customers today, and I don't care if it's schools or businesses um, or a local group for a fundraiser, whatever it may be, um, a lot of customers are demanding their own web store experiences, basically where it says, you know, uh, Washington Cougars, and then you fill that product with their colors, uh, the products that they want to sell for the Washington Cougars. Now, those stores are very popular for pop-up shops that run for a fundraiser for two weeks. If you have kids or, or grandchildren or nieces or nephews, you've probably purchased from one of those stores and maybe you already run your um, own store and you, and you leverage that as a, a sales method. Um, so usually those stores make a lot of sense to keep them open for a certain time frame and close them down. That way we can bulk manufacture the orders when the store closes and I have all the sales so I can order transfers or I can screen print it or manage the order. Now with print cut, you'll notice some really big brands out there that are just printing to order and keeping their store open and letting you buy whenever you wanna buy. Uh, I would say the two leading methods I should say three leading methods to manufacture goods like that for an on-demand fulfillment is direct-to-garment printing, uh, but again, we have limitations of product assortment that we can do, um, t-shirts, et cetera. Then there's sublimation. Again, you have limitations on the products that you can do, although there's certainly a place and, and nice results for both of those, but you have print cut, okay? And so that is the opportunity to be able to print on demand, um, to do stickers. I mean, I just ordered stickers uh, for my nephew for a Christmas present. I ordered one t-shirt, I ordered one sticker, one sticker, and a mug, right? Surely that's going to be fulfilled with print cut, probably with a little DTG and with sublimation. So you have to make the best choice for your investment, but print cut certainly is relevant. Um, I'm going to share my uh, screen for a second because I want to show you a little sample store here. Let's see if I can do this correctly. There we go. So if you don't know, Stalls um, sells a client-specific web store platform. It's called Spirit Sale. Um, it's tremendously popular, um, so much so that over $2 million in end-user sales have went through this system just in the last 90 days. So people are signing on and they are having success with it, um, launching more stores than ever. So I pulled this sample store that we already had built up as a great example of how you could leverage print cut. So this is for Mount Tourism Company. Uh, just like a local tourism agency, but it could be a business, could be a brand, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but when you go into the product assortment, the idea is that, you know, you're the end user that wants to shop, you're setting this up for Mount Tourism Company, um, they can go in, they can see the design on the product, right, with this virtual proof, they can add it to their cart, and they can uh, check out. So an end user may buy a bag, maybe they buy a mug, and, you know, maybe they would buy um, a button up, something like that, this long sleeve uh, denim shirt in their particular size. Um, the idea here is that as a decorator that owns print cut, you could collect these orders. Um, you can batch all of these from ideally different stores, perhaps hundreds if you're really successful of this sales methodology, and you can print all of the orders together on your print cut media. Naturally, a roll for your apparel and then a roll for your decals or your mug graphics or whatever drinkware that you're decorating. So I just wanted to point that out that there is a ton of opportunity for success. Now, I'm gonna glance in at the questions just really quick. Okay, yeah, I think we're, uh, I think we're pretty much uh, good right now on questions. I will jump back if I missed anybody. But um, a, a logical question that we should all have is what does this cost to make? And so I wanna spend a moment kind of talking through that. So, um, I have, if you've never seen it before, we have our heat transfer vinyl cost calculator that we uh, promote a lot for single color heat transfer vinyl that a lot of people decorate with. But did you know that this also works for print cut? 
And so I'm gonna walk you through this. Let's assume for a second that you own your own printer cutter. Um, you would be able to download this and Stacy will share the link on where you can find this uh, on the Stahl's website here in a little while. Um, but you'd be able to complete all this detail for your business and then for your job. So I'm gonna walk you through a sample job. We'll just do that uh, sample denim shirt that we just saw. So first you gotta enter your shop's overhead percentage. Um, that's more than I'm going to explain on today's uh, session, but you can hover here for help, or I'll tell you where I will explain it is we are having our big Heat Press for Profit virtual event, January 5th through 7th. Um, I have a, a class there about calculating costs where I'll go detailed uh, through this and how to calculate all of this. Uh, but anyways, you enter an overhead, just make sure you're not missing overhead because it, electricity costs money, marketing, sales commissions, they all cost money. Um, Hourly rate to whoever's heat pressing, if that's yourself, pay yourself. Hourly rate to whoever's doing the weeding. Those are basically the steps in the process, include weeding and masking uh, here. How many cut designs are in the garment? There's a little helper here and says it's important to calculate. Um, so for that Mount Tourism design that was a left chest logo, uh, let's take another peek at it. Just don't want you guys to forget about the logo we're designing for. It's this one, okay? Number of cut designs, there's only one design on this garment. Right, and that's all in one uh, single print cut layer, which is the beauty of this thing. So we're gonna put in one cut design into this uh, calculator. So I'm just gonna enter one. This is the job info. Average time to weed and mask each cut design. Okay, so something like that, that's a small left chest logo. I can't imagine taking more than two minutes per design. I think it'll take much less, but let's just call it two minutes. Average time to heat press each design. Basically, I gotta load that on because I'm doing that button up, I'll probably insert a pillow or a pad or change my platen. And by the time it's all said and done with lining up a left chest logo, it may take me, I don't know, let's even say three minutes for each garment because I don't wanna mess them up. Then you enter the cost of the blank garment. I don't know how much that costs, but let's just say it cost, you know, $9. And then how many are you doing for the particular uh, job? In this case, we're just gonna do one because it's an on-demand order for a web store. From there, you enter your de design dimensions. So just knowing what I know about left chest graphics, uh, I'll overestimate and just enter four by four. Most stuff left chest never exceeds uh, that size. And all of a sudden, um, the calculations are happening over here on the right-hand side. So I can see how much it cost to produce that out of all these single color materials. But if you scroll down, you'll see how much it costs to produce that out of the express print material with the mask, with the ink, with everything included. So it's a little bit difficult to see. I need to almost lock the cells, but let me look at what these columns are for. So um, let's see, material cost, heat press, weeding and masking, overhead, garment cost, total. So basically if I take the um, overhead and the garment cost out, I can look at the material cost with ink, et cetera, which includes a 15% waste factor. So we know the garment cost me $9. Um, the print cut design is gonna cost 30 cents. The labor is gonna cost more than the design itself. That's an overhead, that's why it's important to calculate for a total cost of 1197. Uh, the question is how much can you sell it for, right? And so I think that uh, something like this, we've marked it, whoever built this store, I think it might've been Jenna marked it, that she thought this could command $32. And I think the really cool part about this is it's a retail shopping experience. They're buying just one, right? Even though you're selling to the group and you're gonna get lots of orders flowing through, they're buying just one. So you can command a little higher profit or you can say, hey, you guys want a bulk order? Um, if you order 30 of these and do a group order, we can get them all for this price. But I wanted to be able to, um, I wanted to be able to show you this because I think it's really uh, critical to thinking about uh, the profitability of this picture. And the point is, uh, print cut can be very profitable. All right, I'm gonna glance in at a couple more questions here before we move on. Uh, Stacy, did you uh, catch anything that I should answer on air? I'm having a tough time keeping up with everything. Yeah, you're fine. There was just one. Um, Tina wants to know, when do you anticipate stocking 30-inch uh, media for items like floor graphics, wall graphics, static clings, et cetera? Those products were discussed in one of the Jimmy videos that you had showed. Yeah. Um, so right now on the Stahl's website, we do have some products. Um, if you go, and let me share my screen again real quick. 
So I'm just over on stalls.com. If you go over to um, CAD Cut Direct, uh, which is our basically our roll goods section, and then you click on Sign Vinyl, you'll see that we do have a basic uh, printable uh, sign vinyl. Um, this basic printable sign vinyl, I'll let it load here. Um, you can see it's more of like an all-purpose. It's a three and a half mil. It's white um, window, car decals, promo signs, banners, etc. Basically for applying to uh, almost any surface. And then if you scroll down here, we do sell it in 20 inch and uh, 30 inch wide rolls by 50 yards right now. So again, very basic offering in the non-apparel side. Stalls really specializes in apparel applications. Um, I don't think there's any imminent plans for us to carry uh, floor graphic, wall gra graphic, all of the you know vehicle media, all of that. Um, however, I do want you to know that the machine can produce more than that. So you probably would just want to find another source that can supply those non-apparel products. We're definitely your source for uh, apparel media for print cut, have the best selection and the best quality. Any other questions, Stacy? right now? Yes, there was one earlier that I received from Lee and I wasn't sure if one of the videos was going to answer his question. Um, but just in case, he has an SG2 300 um, and using wall graphic or wall graphic vinyl, where can he get the over laminate to use on it? Is that going to be discussed in the laminate video or is that something you could answer for him? Um, I mean, source wise, I would probably reach out to Roland and ask him for the distributors near you. The uh, rolls for the non apparel tend to be pretty heavy. So finding a local distributor is great. Um, the video that, that I play will certainly address the workflow on how to use that. Um, but won't go into it like a source, specific source for it. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, excellent. All right, let's go back to my slides for a moment. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the presentation. Uh, I'm trying to help you understand kind of where print cut fits in and really put it through the paces and, and answering the question on whether it's an investment uh, that you should be making in your business. And so that's why not only do I want to point out all the positives, but I, I want to point out kind of like the prerequisites or the things to consider before you invest. Um, number one is um, limitations, five, five free floating detail in graphics, you're weeding this. So you'll there is some limit to how much detail you can do, just like there is with heat transfer vinyl. Uh, and so you have to be careful um, don't think you're going to do like a tagless transfer for the inside of the garment on your print cut machine with free floating text that's the size and the fabric content. Like there will be a point where the media won't be able to hold the detail that you want to do. Um, the other point, which I already mentioned, was overly large graphics. Um, you don't want to put a huge patch on the front of a shirt. It's going to weigh it down. That huge patch on the front of a hoodie that's a heavyweight hoodie, I don't have the same concerns. But just be logical about if you're decorating a lightweight garment. You want some uh, um, some breathability to the design, and that comes in the artwork setup uh, part of it. Um, and then also available space. Uh, Jimmy showed the dimensions in that video, but you saw even a 30-inch printer uh, takes a little bit more than 30 inches, and naturally the 54-inch does as well. So you want to make sure you have the available space uh, wherever you're going to be uh, manufacturing. Uh, part of that space consideration is um, our question that has been asked here on uh, lamination. And so when we think about uh, lamination, it's a separate unit um, that laminates the graphic. In the video where Jimmy masked up front, if you remember that process when he laid that sticky material down and used a little squeegee uh, to mask it, you can certainly do lamination that way. And that's what you'll see in the video is a hand lamination. But if you plan to do any volume, even in apparel, or uh, certainly in uh, sign media that sometimes requires lamination, getting an actual device that rolls a takes a roll of over laminate and puts it on top of your printed roll is going to be of critical importance. We have a lot of people that use those cold laminators. They don't need to have heat uh, for the print cut process for apparel because they're doing a ton of volume and they don't want people sitting there dragging squeegees all day. So you can automate parts of this process. Um, but I do want to show you uh, that lamination, and um, Phil uh, does this part of the video. We're going to pick it up on just a just a clip. It's a little bit longer. It's about eight minutes, um, but he will show you the lamination process from start to finish, and he will also talk about when and why 
uh, you would want to use uh, lamination in the workflow. So let me start that, guys. I'm going to be looking at the chat while this video plays. So feel to ask, ask, feel free to ask questions about this or anything else you have while this is playing. Hi, welcome to Stalls TV. Today, I will be talking about the print, laminate, cut workflow. I'm Phil Tarsi. I'll be assisted by Taylor and Karen today. So let's talk about uh, the need for lamination. Uh, lamination is a thin film that is applied over top of your graphics to help protect them. Um, it'll protect them from debris, from abrasion, other chemicals. So if you're going to be applying graphics in such an environment that's going to require um, lamination, this is how you would do it. So first thing we're going to do is... All right, sorry guys. I think we uh, got the wrong part of the video clip there. We caught the very tail end of it, um, but, but that's okay. I don't know if you caught it in the video. There were the little black registration points that were around the logos. And when you're doing the print only, then laminate, then cut, workflow, this is how it works. Basically, you take that roll of media, let's just say floor graphics, because that's a good case, a very good case for laminations or even helmet decals for football helmets or motocross helmets, whatever it may be. Basically, what you do is you would take that roll of white media, you would print it on the printer cutter with those uh, black dots, those registration marks that are already in the Roland software for you or whatever software you're using. After it just prints, it never cuts, it just prints, okay? Then you're going to take that piece of vinyl or that roll of vinyl out, and you will put a roll of clear material of overlaminate onto it. Overlaminates are sold in uh, different thicknesses, uh, which are typically rated for different um, years of durability. And so, like, I've seen stuff that's just, like, super thick for, like, motocross, for instance, on helmets. And I've also seen stuff that's super thin where we just need a little extra layer of uh, protection. But there's a ton of different choices in overlaminate. So, again, uh, find a Roland distributor that's local to you that specializes in sign uh, materials. Uh, one of the ones that I like is uh, Graphic Solutions Group. Um, they have a pretty wide selection of materials for the sign market as well. And you can use um, an overlaminate from them. So you would lam uh, laminate that whole piece. And then it would actually go back into the printer cutter. You would pull up that same file and now just send it to cut. And it pulls out a little optic eye, they call it. It's almost like a laser. Reads where those marks are and then knows exactly where to cut um, around your design. And then you get a piece that not only has the ink, the, the eco-solvent ink that's already rated for three to five years outdoors, but you get an extra layer of protection for either abrasion or increased durability if you want it to last a lot longer. Pick an overlaminate that's rated for 10 years, 15 years, uh, whatever it may be under the, the conditions of the, the sunlight and the outdoors, the elements. So that is um, a little explanation of the overlaminate process. Uh, of course, um, one of the things I wanted to point out here is make sure that you are considering whether or not you'll need the footprint uh, for lamination as as part of this. So um, that will that will cover that point. Any questions on that? I don't think so, but just in case. Okay, um, I do see another question that came in um, that asks, is the program designed for each and every customer or is it just for me? Um, that was particular to the Spirit Sale platform. Spirit Sale is actually built so you can build the store for your client and then they can share it out to whoever they want in the world that can go on there and purchase products. I shouldn't say in the world, I should say in the US right now. It's a US uh, based product with plans to expand to Canada sometime in 2021. Okay, um, I, I feel like I stressed this point about um, knowledge of software before you invest, but um, we haven't really talked specifically about how to set up artwork for print cut. It's a little bit different um, than your uh, normal artwork setup. So one thing you wanna make sure is when you are designing uh, for print cut that you're identifying specifically the parts of the design that you want the printer cutter to read as a cut file. And there's a little special way of setting this up uh, in the software to make sure, uh, in Corel or Illustrator, to make sure that VersaWorks, which is the software that comes with the Roland printer cutter, um, interprets the artwork correctly so the machine 
uh, knows what to do. And so this one's a short video, and I know I have the right clip on this one because it's the whole video. It's just a three-minute clip that will talk about how to uh, set up artwork for print cut. Now that you have your Roland TrueViz series print cut machine set up, let's take a look at how we set up our artwork to send to VersaWorks to then print to our new print cut machine. Now that we have our graphic imported into Corel Draw, we want to make sure our graphic is ungrouped. We'll select our graphic, go to Object, Shaping, and create our boundary. From here, we'll want to right click on the cut contour color from the Roland color palette to make sure this is a cuttable file in Roland VersaWorks. From here, we'll go to File and Export. We'll name our file and export it as an EPS file. You'll want to make sure your Convert Spot Colors to section is unchecked, and then we'll click OK. From here, now we need to import our graphic into VersaWorks. We'll go to File, Add Job to QA, find our graphic on our computer, so we saved it as Redbirds EPS. It is now loaded into VersaWorks. We'll go to Job, Settings. From here, we'll need to click Get Media With so that we know exactly how much material we have to work with. From here, we'll go to the Quality tab. This will be to ensure that we have the correct media type selected. We're working with Stahl's Express Print, and we want our color management preset to be on True Rich Color. Our next step is to go to Printer Controls. Here, we'll want to make sure our heater controls are set to Default Media Settings. This will ensure that we are using the correct heat settings for the express print material. We'll then select OK. Your print button will be in the lower portion of your VersaWorks software. Once you click the print button, it will then start to rip the file. And once it is done ripping the file, it will heat the dryer to the correct temperature and then print your design. Thanks for watching this training video from Stalls, the world's number one. All right, so a couple quick things you should have picked up there. You see how in the software you'll specify the cut line that you want the cutter to read. And also, uh, Jimmy used some terminology there, the RIP program, which is what the VersaWorks software is. Uh, RIP stands for Raster Image Processing. And so that just allows um, the software basically will convert that um, over into a CMYK format because these printers use CMYK ink. So it'll interpret the data to make sure it prints the appropriate color uh, for you. And so that's, you know, the VersaWorks comes with the printer. You do need to have Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator as the recommendation separate from the printer to be able to set up the artwork. Um, realistically, you can set up artwork um, in CADWorks Live, which is a free software from Stalls, but I feel like if you're really serious about this, and want to make the most of the machine, you really need to have the competency in Corel or Illustrator, okay? So we're going through a lot of uh, choices and trying to give you the information on whether it would be uh, right for you to invest. Uh, one thing when I'm talking to folks um, that are really thinking about this and they want it and they want it so bad, actually, this is one of the products, we sell a lot of it, but sometimes I try not to sell it because uh, it's too early and it's too soon for a lot of people that see this technology and want it. I get jumping in and going all in, but I hate to see uh, small businesses especially bury themselves with equipment investment um, with, for things that they could outsource effectively. And so uh, at Stalls, we offer a product called CAD Prints, which is basically these print cut designs, we just make them for you. And so you would receive the design, uh, print, cut, weeded, masks, uh, ready to heat apply. And so that is a standard service that's quite popular from stalls. Um, if you want to order any of the apparel media, ready to heat apply. And then we also do um, the wall graphics, uh, banners, uh, and some other uh, non-apparel categories in that that you can get. Um, and I think that's a great way to build the customer base. Yes, you're going to pay a premium, um, more of a premium versus doing it in-house, but you're not going to have to have the know-how, the time, the equipment investment. You can build up your market and then 
you can make the investment into the printer to cut your costs and be able to service that need. So just in case you've, you've never heard of this service, um, I'm gonna share my screen uh, one more time. There's two more things I wanna show you on my screen. One is this, and, and another one is some specific uh, print cut investment levels and packages. Um, and then I'm gonna take some additional questions here, but let's see here, share my screen. And I'm gonna hop over to the Stalls website for this. Um, again, we were on this printable sign vinyl, but when you log in and create an account, I'm, I'm logged in under my wife's account, which is the side hustle that I help her with. I can click right in the right-hand corner on artwork uploader. So this is the, the secret passageway, as I like to call it, to um, us doing the work for you, where all you have to do is heat press it. So you would click on this artwork uploader, and once you start to art upload stuff, you'll have your own art dashboard where all those files are saved. Um, but basically it walks you through the whole step from you know one to eight. Um, it's pretty quick. Step number one is attach your file and there's a variety of file formats that we'll accept. Um, I just created one right before here for Jefferson Morgan Rocket. So I'm gonna attach that file. It'll analyze that file. This is a PDF that I created in CADWorks. Uh, which is that free software I talked about. And from them, after you upload it, you just have to select the stall service type that you want. And again, this is, I mean, there's so many products here that can benefit your business, um, but since we're focusing on print cut, I'll select from the CAD prints category today, which is the first one. And then I'll have to say, how do you want this? Do you want a banner? Do you want helmet stickers, static clings, stickers, decals, wall graphics? No, I want digital transfers for heat applied. And so you click on that, and then it'll walk you through, what are you planning to apply these to? Um, let's just say they're going to 100% polyester, uh, dark fabric. It's not a split front, it's not a baseball jersey or anything. And then it'll tell me the available materials sold by stalls that will work uh, for that particular application. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the soft opaque because I want something super thin and soft on this performance polyester. And then it will ask you, if you want a contour color, basically do you want an outline color so that logo stands off or only an outline if needed. Um, sometimes with this print cut process, uh, if you try to cut directly over top of the ink on extremely fine detail, you may need a white or light colored outline to make the process work better so the media can execute it. So let's just say we do want one of those. Um, you're actually able to enter a Pantone color or just say, hey, make it white or you can go into the stall's digital color palette and you can say, you know what, I'm pressing these onto a red shirt, um, so let me get this bright red as my outline color around my graphic. Or that doesn't make much sense, it's a pink logo. Let me change that color. <laughs> All right, so let's say we're putting that pink logo onto, I don't know, a light blue shirt. So let's go to light blue as my outline color. Now I can type in the size of my design. Let's say I want this um, five inches by proportionally the height six inches for a center chest. Um, I can name the design, JM sample. And then I can type in any special instructions to the artists um, that, I, that I would need to. And you'll see, it'll give me a quote, right? So it's telling me if I order 25 pieces, it'll be 288 each. If I order eight pieces, it'll be 352 each. Um, there is a $25 order minimum when you order these CAD prints logos from us. But the really cool thing is you can get into some product categories um, without having to stock all of the rolls of material. So let's just say I want 25 of them. I can type that in. It'll calculate that's gonna cost me $72 for that job. I put in my contact info and then I click submit artwork. From there, it goes to the team at Stalls, and I can follow through the process to order this transfer. So I wanted you to see that there is a path for you to get these pre-done for you. You don't necessarily have to invest in the uh, equipment and, and go for it yourself, okay? So I wanted to make sure I showed you that, and then uh, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about actually uh, printing this, you know, we can handle gradients, James, no problem, because we'll just print the gradients. Uh, as far as designing the gradients, um, I actually was able to do that in CADWorks. So I created this whole design in CADWorks. I'll just show you real quick how to do a gradient. Basically, just put ABC on there for something simple. Um, grab whatever font it is I want. And then when I go to the fill color, um, basically I'll click on that fill color 
and I'm going to tell CADWorks I want a gradient, and then I'll be able to select color number one and say, let's make it purple. Color number two, let's fade it to pink, and it'll create it for me. If I want to add an additional color because I don't like that, I click the plus. I can create another uh, another level here, and let's add more purple. And you can see it kind of mixes it. And I can say horizontal, let's make it vertical. You can play around here, basically click OK, and then it will fill uh, your text. Um, I always like when I'm designing with gradients and patterns um, to have an outline. So let me put a small outline around it within CADWorks. And let's make it black so it pops a little bit. And then I can reduce the size of that outline if I want. So very quick, uh, very easy to create custom artwork in CAD works. Uh, but again, uh, it's no substitute, I don't think, for Corel or Illustrator if you're doing a lot of print cut work, because you're still going to need to assign those cut contour cut lines. But CAD works can automate a lot of the a lot of the process for you uh, with some of these quick effects and choices. So really cool and, and frankly you can export this and print it with sublimation too if that's what you're doing. So it's just a, a free artwork software that that you can use. Um, okay, last thing I want to show you before I really dive deep on any uh, final questions is um, our quote form. And this is a lot of information, <laughs> but here's the main thing I want you to hear uh, right now. And I'll pull this back up in a second uh, before I go into this detail. If you've watched all of this, and I know some of you are coming on late, so you will get a chance to watch it back since you're registered. But if you watch this and you're like, yes, 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 a printer cutter is for me, and you decide that these investment levels that I'm showing you next uh, make sense for your business. I just want you to type it into the chat. You can send it privately to us and just say you're interested. Um, you're interested in whatever the model is, if you know, or just that you're interested in general, please have somebody call me. Um, if you haven't figured it out by now, we're not hard salespeople, we're educators. And so what we like to do is present the choices. And if it's a fit for your business, then great. If it's not, uh, no big deal. But if you want to talk to one of our reps after this, it's much better if they can get specifically into your business, any specific questions you have, and make sure that you get the right printer cutter. It's a big investment. We want to make sure it's right and take the time with it. So if you're interested, after you look at these prices, just type that in. If you're not, no big deal either. Um, so let me um, share these prices with you real quick uh, that we have going on. These are some of our packages. So three basic units I'm going to cover um, with you. One is the SP300i. Uh, Roland has had uh, quite a supply issue, honestly, with printer cutters. Uh, it's understandable with COVID and with everything that's happening. We're having our challenges with heat presses and, and products as well. Uh, but because of these supply issues, they remade uh, one of the units that were pretty popular years ago. That was the SP300i. And here at Stalls, we bought some of those units to be able to have some stock to ship some right away. So I want to clarify and tell you I, I literally only have three of these models uh, in stock as of two minutes before this webinar I checked. Um, but this SP300, you'll see it has um, CMYK inks, basically cyan, uh, magenta, black, and yellow. And so it's a four color ink set, which is typically um, all you'll need to hit a lot of your basic colors. If you wanna get into like really uh, photo quality expanded color palette or you need to hit license colors for sports or corporate um, you know the CMYK unit is not going to hit as much of the Pantone book is another uh, unit that I'm going to talk about here in a second but if you're starting in print cut uh, this machine is awesome for the price you can see the list price of the machine is nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars which is phenomenal for a 30 inch printer that's a lot faster than the 20 inch ones that used to be sold um, at this price point. Uh, we bundle in some material for you um, and the sales rep can talk you through everything you need to know there. And then uh, we do um, a basically a on-site installation and software training. Right now we're doing a lot of that virtually uh, due to COVID and travel restrictions, but you can talk to the sales rep about that. But basically you're getting delivery, you're getting the whole package inks and everything for just over 12,000. Uh, on this device. So that's the SP300i. Um, I'd say it's um, certainly a quality unit. You won't, you won't want for more um, other than if you're doing some of those, um, you want to do better on the Pantone matches or you want wider. This 300 means 30 inch uh, unit. Now the other 30 inch unit, um, just to cover that, and these ones um, right now we're running out into delivery at the end of February, early March. 
uh, based on uh, Roland's turn time on this one. This is our SG2 uh, 300. Uh, it's 12995. Uh, basically, on this one, um, you're still getting the CMYK inks. You're just getting the latest TR2 ink technology. Um, all of the media packages the same, um, more or less for where we're sitting right now. Uh, this is a great unit at the 12995, but with those three units of the SP300i, if you can jump on those, I would recommend those first. But if you're thinking about investing sometime next year um, in a 30 inch, this would be a price. Uh, point to target for the 30 inch that's going to be readily available in 2021 and beyond the latest unit. Package deal runs a little bit over 15,000, 15,500. The last one I'm going to show you is the VG2540. Uh, and so this one's quite the upgrade, uh, but I think it's worth it. Um, this is a 54 inch, so it's going to put you into um, a better width especially if you plan to do a lot of banners, posters, vehicle wraps, anything like that. Um, you know, a, a four foot wide banner is, or even a three foot wide banner, those are pretty standard out there. So you're not gonna be able to print those on a 30 inch machine. So this really opens up that world for you. And banners are great because you basically just print them. Uh, no weeding, no cutting, it's very profitable, maybe grommet them. Um, and then you can see here what you really gain in addition to the width is you gain a heck of an extended color palette. So you can see not only does it have the CMYK inks, it has the light cyan, the light magenta, and the light black, as well as the addition of orange. Um, don't quote me, it's either 88 or 92%, I forget which one it is, but it's it's something like 88 to 92% of the Pantone color palette you can hit with this ink setup. So especially if you're going to be really focused on uh, color reproduction, uh, this could be uh, the unit for you. And really, you know, in the grand scheme of it, for an investment that's going to be a five, 10 year investment, I think the price point is pretty fair. And certainly we have uh, financing that you can apply for you, where you can break this 21,000 or whatever you package with it, even throw a heat press in with it. Um, you can, you can break that down in such a way that you can spread it over the uh, course of many years through a financing company and even get a nice uh, tax write off with uh, the section 179 tax breaks that you can get. Uh, typically every year that you claim at the end of the year on your uh, business taxes if you have uh, if you have a, a tax ID for your business. So hopefully that gives you kind of a, a whirlwind tour of print cut. I know we ran a little bit over my hour target time here, uh, but I really wanted to go deep. Um, and certainly you're going to have more questions and we're open to answer those. I'm going to look in now and ask Stacy if there's anything that bubbled up to the top that we should cover together. Yep, there's just two questions that I wanted to read with uh, for you, if that's okay. Please. Um, Matt had a question earlier. He wants to know if there are any um, noticeable differences you could speak to with the Roland TrueViz VG2 that you just talked about versus the Epson Sure Color series. Um, he's having a hard time deciding between the two machines. Um. Not, I mean, I would have to research the shore color just to be honest. I know, I don't know um, too much about it uh, off the top of my head. Um, I know the VG2 certainly is a reliable unit. That's why we've chosen to, uh, we've been with Roland as long as I've been here, honestly, uh, between cutters and printer cutters, which has been a long time, like almost 20 years. Um, so I know there's a dependability element, but uh, Matt, let me get, it was Matt, correct, Stacy? Yep, Matt. Okay, Matt, I'll... Uh, if you want to just privately chat us your contact info, maybe an email, uh, we'll drop you a note and I'll do a more direct comparison for you. Awesome. And then the other question was from Addison. I checked on our site. I didn't see anything unless I overlooked it. But she was curious, what is the electrical requirements for the print cut machines that we offer? Standard outlet or 22240? Yeah. So sorry, 22240. Yeah, definitely standard outlet, and I don't know the exact amps that it pulls, but it's not a lot. Um, I've had these plugged in even with a 16 by 20 heat press, even though it's not recommended. Uh, so it doesn't pull very much at all. There is an important point that you want to keep it plugged in uh, to the wall um, at all times because it, um, it does require that it comes on every once in a while and does its own cleanings if it's not in use. Um, this isn't a technology where you get a lot of ink clogs or anything like DTG is known for, especially if you don't have the white or metallic inks in the device. Um, so it's pretty dependable from that standpoint, but um, you should also plan uh, to do the maintenance which with 
uh, the technician will go through with you when you get the machine um, because you will have to do uh, manual cleanings at some frequency, but it's a super easy process uh, with a cotton swab and, and the steps you have to go through. Is that it right now? That was it for questions. I was just going to go ahead and paste the um, registration link for our virtual event, too, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. So our heat press for profit virtual event, Stacy will share that with you guys. Um, I can't tell you even how much work has went in uh, to preparing for this, but it's January 5th through 7th. It's a, a three-day event, two days of education just like this. Uh, we're pulling out uh, all the big presenters and, and just giving you two days full of uh, content. And then third day, you can even schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments with, uh, with our sales team that are set up in home studio similar to me. And so they can walk through your specific questions. But sign up. It's free. It's going to be a great uh, experience. I think you'll really enjoy it. It'll help everybody to kick off their business, their heat press business uh, for 2021. Uh, we'll be making some exciting announcements and showing some new products there as well. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate you sticking with me, attending part three of our equipment series. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to our team. We're standing by uh, for you. So thanks so much. Have a great day.